Okay, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to uh, another virtual Lunch and Learn with uh, your team at uh, Jane Irrigation. Uh, I'm Richard Restucia, Vice President of Water Management Solutions with uh, Jane uh, Irrigation, and I'm really excited today for uh, our Lunch and Learn presentation, which is Distribution Uniformity, a Key to Grower Profitability. Now, uh, I'm excited about this for a couple reasons. One is I, I feel like We've done about 27 of these lunch and learns so far over the last few months, and you can see all those on our on our website and uh, and look at the past ones and, and catch up on what you've missed if you missed. And I feel like today we're really you know stepping up into like a 200 or 300 level class today, uh, so that's very exciting to me because I think distribution uniformity can make a big big difference for uh, anybody in the ag world and the landscape world as well. So it, it really applies well to. Uh, to both uh, groups. Uh, and then the other reason why too is our, our presenter. Our presenter today is Michael Pippen and uh, Michael does an excellent job on these presentations. Uh, if you saw him in, uh, in, the field, in the watermelon fields a couple weeks ago, uh, helping us out with technology and uh, irrigation, you saw what a great job he, he does. Uh, he's the former chair of the certification board with the Irrigation Association. He is uh, the director of uh, business development for uh, Jane Irrigation and uh, has a real passion. He's been working in ag and irrigation for really all his life. Uh, he's one of these guys who's grown up in the world uh, and has, uh, it's very natural for him to talk about ag, talk about irrigation, and then he's got all the certifications along with that. So uh, that's why I'm so excited about the presentation today. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Michael and say, Michael, welcome. Um, you are not in the fields this uh, this week. Where, where are you coming from today? Uh, I'm, I'm actually at home in, in Central Florida. Uh, I live right outside of Tampa, right about halfway between Tampa and Orlando and Lakeland, Florida. And uh, that's where I'm recording from from today. Uh, so yeah, I, I appreciate the kind introduction, Richard, um, uh, and thank you for the opportunity to share a little bit. Yeah, I think I think we are right. This this topic here is um, is a, a little more technical than we've spent um, some of our sessions on in the past, but it's a nice transition, kind of as as people learn along with us through these webinar series. Um, I'll also say that this is, distribution uniformity is really kind of the tip of the iceberg. For, for some potential uh, future webinars where this, this distribution uniformity is really kind of the groundwork um, to leading to, um, you know, the, the, a very uh, well-managed irrigation system. So we're going to talk a little bit today about what uh, distribution uniformity is, and then also kind of talk a little bit about what it is not and uh, then really lead into, you know, what, what, what is reasonable to expect? How do we get to those expectations? And kind of what do we what do we do with that once once we're done with that and, and then maybe a little springboard into some future topics and we can talk offline or, or, or lead up to maybe a new new webinar later down the road. And so, you know, I show this picture here. Uh, if, if you saw my previous one, uh, previous uh, talk that I did a couple of, I don't know, probably close to a month ago. This is actually the same picture that I used for that. Uh, when we talked about combining technologies, this is a great picture here. And today we're going to talk about uniformities and, and uniformity. I'm going to define here quickly, but this picture I also think shows that um, that that topic very well. Not only just combined technologies, but the uniform application of water um, in a field. So, so I, I use the same picture. I, that was intentional. I guess that's what I mean. I didn't <laughs> didn't just copy it. I, that is intentional. Yeah, and so I, I, I just want to remind everybody too, Michael, um, we do have uh, the Q&A um, open as well as the chat. I'll be following uh, any questions or um, uh, questions that are in the chat as well and uh, relaying those on to you. So if any of our audience has questions as we go along, that's a great way for them to ask them. Perfect, thank you, Richard. Uh, so, so yeah, what is distribution uniformity? Um, and what is not distribution uniformity? Um, I'll also preface this, preface this conversation today and then, you know, definitely bring attention to it at the end of the, of the presentation as well as where a lot of this content comes from. Um, majority of the content in this presentation comes from the Drip Micro Irrigation Design and Management book that was uh, published by the ITRC, the Irrigation Technology and Research Center, and, and the authors of that are two pillars of our industry that most all of us have have at least had the privilege to to, to hear the name or, or know or, or definitely read one of the reference material that's dr charles burke and stuart Stiles, dr stuart styles 
Uh, both those men um, have put a tremendous amount of time and effort into our industry. And, and a lot of these terms and te te um, you know, topics that we're going to talk about today come from that handbook. I'll show you how to get that handbook later on in the presentation. But you know, definitely want to say thanks to them. And I appreciate the opportunity that I've had working through the Irrigation Association to, to learn from them and through, the, through these manuals that they provide. So distribution uniformity, or DU, um, I'll try to use that term a little bit throughout the presentation. DU is the evenness of water applied to the plants throughout the field. So one way to think about it is if the plant closest to your pump with the highest pressure and maybe the uh, least uh, probability to clog, it is getting one gallon an hour, how much water is the plant that is the furthest from your pump with the lowest pressure and maybe the highest probability to clog, how much water is it getting? What is that differential between, you know, you kind of your average or your expected flow rate and kind of your lowest flow rate? That's really what we're talking about, how even the water is applied. Um, irrigation efficiency uh, describes the performance of the irrigation system, uh, basically comparing how much water are you pumping that the plant actually uses is I think a great way beneficially used is how they what, what the terminology that we use a lot and uh, beneficially used uh, primarily is going to be you know, what the crop, crop requirement is what the ET of that crop is uh, maybe you beneficial use could be um, you know washing some salts out of the soil uh, maybe some beneficial use could be even like climate control and things like that. So, so what is, how many gallons are you paying to pump that actually, you know, serve a beneficial use out in the field? So those two terms, I think, kind of go together. Um, you, just because you have a high distribution uniformity, just because your water is being applied very evenly, does not mean that you have a high efficiency system. It doesn't mean that you're actually applying the water um, beneficially all the time. However, it is very difficult to have a high efficiency system or a very irrigation efficient system without an evenly applied amount of water. So those things, that's why they got to tie together. You can have a high DU and a low irrigation efficiency, but it's very difficult to have a high irrigation efficiency, and uh, an uneven application of water. Uh, irrigation sagacity is actually kind of the next step towards that, uh, that down the road where they broaden out the topic from saying um, just water beneficially used, but also reasonably used. And that reasonably used, again, kind of broadens that out. You know, maybe there's other, you know, maybe there's economic reasons, or maybe we want to overwater some areas for some reason, or we maybe we want to underwater some areas for some reasons, right? So basically kind of broadens out from just beneficially used to reasonably used. And that's kind of how those three terms work together. Distribution uniformity only applies to how even the water is being applied. Does not necessarily tell you that the system is operating or being a very uh, efficient irrigation system. So, Michael, can I ask a question on that, please? Yes, yes, so, please. So, um, uh, distribution uniformity is really about, did I use the right products? Did I install it correctly? And am I getting uh, good DU as a result? Where the other two, there's an actual factor of, am I managing my system correctly too? Right, there's a human element to those or not? I think that, that, that you're hitting a great point there, Richard. The, the distribution uniformity is really the building block. By itself, it's just a small snapshot of how, you know, product selection, design, all those things, right? It, but, but without it, you basically can't apply the scheduling or the maintenance or all the testing. Um, if you don't have that DU in place to start with, all those other things are going to be less than optimal. So it's really kind of this building block to something bigger and, and, and better um, and allows you to be more successful, right? Great, thank you. So I'll also say that, you know, again, kind of taking one, uh, I'd say more of a, a, a higher view of this distribution uniformity. Today, we're gonna really focus on this flow rate DU, you know, the application of water out of the emitters. You know, we'll, we'll talk in, um, 
you know, hope maybe later on, and if you, you know, private message me later on, you know, we can talk through this a little bit more, but, you know, there really is a, a broader component of system distribution uniformity, which is really what we're, our ultimate goal in that takes in the things, other, other things into account than just how well you're, how evenly you're applying water, right? It talks into drainage and spacings and things like that. Um, but your, your application DU is the, by far the largest component of your system DU. System DU can be broadened out and there's tests to really quantify that and you can really get their system dialed in then to where you could even imagine a scenario where you didn't want water applied evenly because the plant requirements, the soil conditions change, right? Probably, probably soil conditions change to where your, your system DU could be higher than your application DU. Again, that's kind of getting down the road, but those are kind of some, you know, precursors of what we ultimately, how important this singular concept of DU is to a broader. But today we're going to really focus on uh, flow rate distribution, flow rate distribution uniformity, I should say. So I think you got to start with what is a what is a good DU? What are we trying to do, right? What is good? What is bad? What is the measurement here? And we talk a lot in percentages, and that I think that's probably the easiest way to to communicate it. The ITRC um, did did some testing and published some of these results to where they looked at some systems that had some age on them, you know, not brand new installations, but maybe you know around 10 years old, and they found they documented systems that were in this 88 to 92 percent uniformity. And these systems were about 10 years old. So what does that what does that 92% uniformity mean? And I think kind of in a you know again a very layman's term is that you think you know you're still like A B C D grades you get in school kind of apply like 90 and above is an A that's good right kind of the 80s or Bs you get down in the low 80s and 70s you kind of average at best and then below that we're not doing too good and that kind of applies here to distribution uniformity as well this this line right here you know we won't get in the weeds here too much but this is kind of a hundred percent uniformity this straight line where everything is getting the exact amount of water um you know the, these some of these terms start getting the, into some statistics so they're they're not necessarily just you know point to point so, so i like this graph because it kind of shows what a 90% uniform system is, right? It's not just below, it could be above and it can be below. So that variance can be a little bit more than what you would expect. And then you see 75%, you know, the C, the, the C minus probably of distribution uniformity. And you can see the variance difference here in terms of percentages, big swings um, across, a, across an area. So that, that, that graph there is really to show you that you know, oh, a 90 is pretty good, and it is pretty good, um, but you can still see there's some significant, can be some significant variations within a field that's 90 percent uniform. I, I love that uh, chart. You know why? Um, you know, in, in landscape irrigation, we find many systems at 50 percent or maybe even 45. <laughs> and man, when you look at that over irrigation side of that chart, you start to think, oh my gosh. So uh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great chart. I, I hadn't seen one like that before. I really like that. Yeah, it's pretty interesting, right? So again, you know, well, if the question comes in, you know, like, okay, well, I want 100% do you. Let's do that. <laughs> okay, well, that can be easier said than done, right? And I think, I think the jumping off point here for distribution uniformity and kind of where us as a manufacturer, I put my manufacturer hat on for a little bit, really kind of the, you know, we talk about DU being the building block for uh, a better system operating uh, environment, what is the building block of the distribution uniformity is, and, and I believe it's probably this, you know, coefficient of variation, this CV, and, and what that really, really is, is a statistical um, metric, uh, very similar to a standard deviation, uh, where it really talks about um, how, if you produce a thousand or a hundred of these drippers or jets or whatever you're producing, and we all say the average flow rate of those is one gallon per hour. How many of those thousand or hundred do you produce are within a certain percentage of one gallon per hour? So one way to think is kind of how tight is your cluster that's a few, mar you know, let's call it marginally different from one gallon per hour. So instead of one gallon per hour, they might be 0.01 or 1.01 or 0.9995, right? That's marginally different, right? And how many of them are 0.96 or 1.09, right? How many are way out here on the edge? 
And so the, the, all that to say that the lower the CV, the tighter your, um, your variance is, right? So the, the, the tighter your cluster around that one gallon per hour, ten, whatever, whatever your specification is, that's that CV. So CV of perfect is 0, 0.0, right? It's flat, right? So that's where we want to be. Uh, closer to zero, the better uh, the CV is. So one way to kind of take that and, and twist it in these same percentages that we're looking at from distribution uniformity, if you have a, a, a coefficient of variation of 0.03, again, depending on how you kind of place these out in the field, there's some, there's some equations there that kind of dial that out. But, you know, you can say that you're around 97% distribution uniformity. If you put uh, two drippers at each plant and your coefficient of variance is 0.03, Good, excellent. That's an excellent coefficient of variance. If you go to kind of this average, you can see you go from like 0.03 to 0.07. These are kind of industry, you know, standard. They're not standards, not the right word, but you know, kind of industry um, um, targets is probably a better way of saying it. You know, you're at 94%, 93, 94% distribution uniformity at 7.07 uh, coefficient of variance. So what, where does that where does the rubber hit the road? There is that you know you can start out off the shelf at 94. You're already at 94. If you go back to here, um, well, I'm quite, not quite there yet. Let me let me get back. It, you you start to, you know if you if you get a coefficient of variance of 0.07, you're at 94 right off the shelf when you buy it from your your distributor and, and before you even put it in there, you're already at six points under 100. So that's not bad, but that's not great either. Um, what I'm showing here in our picture is kind of our three of our leading drip products. And, 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 and these are our click tips, kind of our punch in drippers. This is our Amnon, which is really our flagship inline emitter. Um, and then our top drip is also one of our very popular emitters. We put in, you know, a very wide range of wall thicknesses. All of these sit below this 0.03 coefficient of variance. And so that's one way for us to pr provide that, that good starting point that value to get you close to as close as 100% as you can before you put them out in the field, right? And so that, that's something that we really take a lot of pride on. And that really is kind of characteristics of how, um, how, how um, things are manufactured and the attention to detail and, and, you know, raw materials and molds and all that kind of good stuff that comes into the manufacturing process. Yeah, it's a, that was a big aha moment for me, Michael, you know, because you think about it uh, on one, one dripper, big deal but literally tens of thousands of drippers in a field, this is really going to add up. That's, that's right. I mean, it, it's kind of a, you've got two things working against you here, uh, working against you, probably not the right term, but you've got a, a percentage and then you've got a scale, right? You start turning these uniformities from percentages into gallons, and that could be a lot of gallons, right? Which is kind of where we'll lead to at the end. That a lot of gallons can be dollars and, and profitability, right? So, you know, there's a, there's a you know, three or four or five or 10%, it's kind of easy to, to, um, to not really understand how that applies to your pocketbook, but you start turning it into gallons or fertilizers or things like that, and it really turns into a lot of dollar bills very quickly. You know, I, I'd also say really quickly is there, there, there are applications, if I put my designer hat on for a minute to where, you know, maybe there's economic circumstances or application circumstances where you may or may not need, as I use that term a little low, might not need the highest of the highest of the highest, right? There, it's kind of like buying a, a uh, tires for your vehicle, right? There, there's some that are cost $500 and there's some that cost 300 and then some that cost 100. And part of a good design process is trying to figure out which one of those fit. I'd say there's not a whole lot of cases that the cheapest one is the best, but there might be a cluster. Uh, we offer, you know, we actually offer some drippers that are a little bit uh, lower than this. And maybe there's an application for that. So just keep that in mind that not always the absolute best is is what you're looking for there but in in general i think we're trying to trying to pick up as many points as we can these are easy points right here you can buy buy you some uniformity right here and and really the pricing difference has really come out of these uh, emission devices over the last you know 10 years to where uh the the cost to go from something that would be average performance to excellent is really not that much difference so again some more things that are interesting about what a good du is 
And uh, the and, and I don't know if the landscape customers are quite like this, but our ad customers are. The first thing we do is we look across the road and see what the neighbors doing, right? We've done some we've done some studies, um, or not us in particular, but like um, even like the 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 national uh, ag surveys, and we talk about how do you know when to irrigate, right? I remember we looked at that, Richard, and it was um, it was basically one of, one of the one of the highest ratings of how you knew when to turn on your irrigation system was what was the neighbor doing, right? And that's and that's kind of where this chart comes from is where's the neighbor at, right? We're always we always want to compare ourselves to what we're not, not what we're trying to be, but what we're not. We're not at this over here, and that's where we say you know we go okay, well we already defined that good is over here, right? Good is let's call it 90, right? Maybe even broaden that out to 85 to 95%. This is good. This is exceptional over here. And these, this was a, came from a consulting group that helped us with some other, other projects and they did some testing on their own. And, and, you know, I don't know all the metrics of where these, you know, these systems were, but they're most likely West Coast permanent crops, you know, drip, micro jet, something like that. Probably a good bit of pre PC products in this. And um, the bulk though, you can see, are 75 to 85 percent right that's where the bulk of the systems that were tested are and over here what we decided was good a few slides ago um barely maybe 20 percent of the systems there's way more on the left side of this curve than in the right side of the curve with the meat kind of falling in a c plus b b minus and so that that kind of help help i think quantifies you know how important it is to start out with a good product, right? There's, there's obviously other, we already, we were at nine. I just told you I could sell you a dripper that was 97. How in the world did we get to 75 so quick, right? What happened there, right? That's a lot of points we just gave up. And, and this is kind of from that same study. And we won't go into the, again, I don't know all the details of what qualifies a difference of, of, of what affected distribution uniformity. I don't know what qualifies plugging to be different than maintenance, but let's just look at some of these topics real quick. Some of it, they just said the system was old. Um, some of them, they said they started out at a poor design. Um, I think that can be a lot of things. Maybe it's a, uh, poor product selection. Um, uh, maybe it's a poor, yeah, yeah. Pro, just leave it at poor product selection. Maybe the CV was too high, was, was high and, but it wasn't very clog resistant. They had a lot of dirty water or, or maybe it was too low to start with. And we try to save too much money as a, as a, as a designer. You know, there's a lot of things that could go into that. Sandware is one that, that we see some down here in Florida. We pump a lot of sand through our filters. You get a hole in your filter, start pumping sand through a micro jet system, and all of a sudden your your 12 gallon hour orifice over here on this side of the field where the sand accumulates is now 15 gallons an hour, right? So you can see that uh, topography kind of to me falls in this design, but elevation changes, plugging, pressures, mixed nozzles you know kind of this falls to me like maintenance you got some nozzles that popped off and then you don't have a green one so you put a red one in there because it's about the same right and then you do that for five years and now you got a whole bunch of them right and so these are things that can deteriorate that distribution uniformity over a period of time my experience is that there's two things that immediately affect distribution uniformity one is usually right out of the out of the gate from a design standpoint is your pressure differential even the best, um, you know, our, our emitters that we showed a few slides ago, even the best of the best, in our opinion, vary flow rates over pressures. They, they do. They're not perfect, right? And, and some do more than others. And, and there's, again, there's design considerations for that. But all, all, all these emission devices, whether it's a jet or a sprinkler, a pop-up rotor or emitter, they vary with pressures. And so, you know, you, I, a system that doesn't have the topography or doesn't design that or maybe has a little bit of extra friction loss, um, as soon as you put them in the field, that uniformity is not 97 anymore because those were tested in the lab with exactly the same pressures. We've got 10, 15, 20 PSI differential. Now that 97 is in the low 90s, right, right out of the gate. So that's a big thing that really immediately affects it. And I'd say the second thing that I see is plugging. Uh, get some drip for slopped up. Um, and that, that's really where we'll talk about some of this testing protocol and how we figure out what the field's really doing. It really highlights. We don't run from these low areas. We, we highlight them to try to understand, you know, um, how the system is performing. So all these things plus some um, immediately deteriorates. That's why it's so important to start out with a high DU because there's stuff in the field. That's where the, where it gets real, right, is out in the field. We're trying to figure out how to make this stuff work.
This is um, the num that, that slide was showing the number of the 750 that they tested. So almost 200 were maintenance related. Is that right? That's right. And, and again, I don't, I don't know what all falls in the maintenance, but I would suggest flushing is probably the big thing, right? Keeping the trash out. Um, you know, this one, it highlights leaks as well, right? Nothing will deteriorate a line like a hole in it halfway down where the pressures drop off or, you know, something like that. So, I mean, maintenance is a pretty, you could probably put a lot of these buckets into maintenance. Um, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, that, that for the terms of this survey, you know, that was just kind of a general, um, you know, lack of service on, on a system. And, and, you know, it, it's a lot of work, right? It, it's a lot of work to maintain these systems. There's a lot of drippers out in the field, like that's showing in your background there, right, Richard? I mean, it's a lot. So, it, yeah, S seems like a great uh, topic for a future lunch and learn. <laughs> That's right. So I think, I think you know, um, at least kind of where I would like to take this discussion kind of the end is, is what do I do with all this information? We've talked about distribution uniformity, how important it is. Hopefully you've got some sort of general idea of what we're looking for, um, how, how we get there, what can affect it, what can deteriorate it. So what do I do with that? I'm, I'm a grower. Now I'm taking, I took my manufacturer hat off, put my designer and I'll take that off and I put an end user on it and say, what do I do with all this? Great. I know what I, uh, you know, what, what, what should I be looking for? And I think uh, I would start with a good distribution uniformity for you and your application. Like I said, I, I, you, there are, I'd say in, in most cases, we want the highest distribution uniformity that we can achieve. Um, and, but that's not always the case. There are some design considerations. You got to think about what kind of system you, you need, um, understand what is out there capable, you know, what can you achieve? You know, if you don't know that 90 was good until today, right. Then that, then you kind of know where you need to shoot for and what can it, what affect your system and, and, and think about that. And I talk to your designer and I would even probably push your designer a little bit. I don't do design work on a day-to-day -day basis like I did for a lot of my career. Um, and, I, and I don't know, um, you know, I don't know if I got enough pushback on that. I, I, you know, it, it, I, there may, I, I think it'd be healthy that in time uh, that would be, you know, a qualification that a grower or producer would, would ask for. If you're, if you're looking for some government funding, there's often is kind of a blank that you fill in and say, what is your distribution uniformity? But again, it's kind of a number floating out there in the, in the, in the, in space until we kind of start grabbing onto what's reasonable for us to expect. So talk about it with your designer, say, what is a good DU? What can I expect? What can I expect five years, 10 years from now? And really put a lot of thought in that because there's probably going to be a little bit of a sliding cost scale with that too, where you can get some good value up to a percentage point, like maybe going up to one of our, um, battery drippers really doesn't cost you a whole lot, but to kind of push you over that next 5% might cost a significant amount of money and you may decide not to do that. So think about what's good for you, understanding what's bad, right? You don't want to be in that low, you don't want to be getting C's and D's and F's, right? We want to stay out of that range. How can we get B pluses, A minuses, A pluses, those type of things. Um, and I'm going to use the same general term that they used in the previous, like maintain your system, right? Um, maintain your system. Maintain means flushing it. Uh, plugging is a big contributor to, um, to distribute. You can have the best distribution uniformity from our coefficient of variance from, from um, uh, a manufacturer, <clears throat> but that does not mean you cannot plug it with sand and it'll stop up. You know, th those are things that require maintenance from your system. Here is some, uh, there, there's some uh, protocols on how to test and how to maintain your system. Again, provided by the ITRC, lots of best management practices. Here, we're kind of flushing these lines <clears throat> seeing what's in the, you know, what can we expect? Um, if I'm catching a lot of materials here, what, what does that mean in terms of testing and management? If I'm not catching a whole lot, maybe I need to only do this, you know, once a month. If I'm catching a whole lot of material at the end of my lines, I need to put in some protocol for that. Uh, this one was in the Pacific Northwest that we did a, an uh, evaluation or audit we did a couple of years ago uh, with a sales team at Jane. Um, and here, this is one we did recently in, in Florida, where we basically, you know, opened up this, this, this one in Pacific Northwest was a couple years old. They had, they had, it was a big operation. They had some stuff that was three or four and then also years old and then some stuff that was pretty new. <clears throat> this is a brand new system in Florida, you know, less than six months old, where uh, we were testing the uniformity of the, of the drippers. Um, trying to evaluate what was going on there. We had these little catch bags. That's kind of a little, you know, little 
perforated sack there, if you will. We open up the lines, see what kind of material we're getting. If we're not getting a whole lot, then, okay, it's reasonable to assume that our uh, distribution uniformities are going to maintain that high level for a, a period of time, right? If we are catching a lot, we want to maintain that. So that's, that's a big piece of the, um, of, the, of the testing and maintenance protocol, seeing what kind of material is there. Here's a picture of us testing uh, the distribution uniformity in a field. There's a cup there and a little cup there and a little cup there. And we're actually catching the amount of water on a set period of time and using uh, testing protocol to, to calculate what the field distribution uniformity is. So now we're kind of graduating away from what's our individual one little dripper uh, uniformity and looking at the field in general. And that's really where we want to see, right? There, if you have a large enough cross section, you're going to be able to find a handful of emitters that are not going to be performing properly. And that's why we talk a lot about putting multiple drippers or multiple dripper lines per row. There's a lot of drippers. It's just a volume game, right? It goes from being a percentage to actual, you know, hard unit of measurement. And if you have, you know, 100,000 drippers out there, you're going to have a few that aren't going to be doing what they're supposed to do. So that's why we talk a lot about putting multiple drippers per plant that helps improve your distribution uniformity because one of them can't derail the whole field. This system here was extremely challenging from a design standpoint. I was not involved on the design side of it, but I was involved on the audit side. And when I say test the maximum of the allowable operation range, this system here, um, I forget the exact specs, but I believe th this was in the Pacific Northwest uh, with one of our, our, our big producers up there. And uh, I, I think it was our M9, but it might've been our top drip. Anyway, it was one of our inline pressure uh, regulating emitters. And they were operating from the very low, you know, 15, 17 PSI to stuff that we had that was red line, you know, 55 PSI. I mean, at the end of the, I mean, we, we worked the whole, I, I mean, I'm from Florida and Louisiana. I don't have elevation change like that. I, you know, we have 10% of vari 10, 10 PSI variation in the field. We think that's a lot. It was from the minimum to the maximum. And this field is tested, you know, just almost perfectly. You know, we were high 90s uniformity, field uniformity, right? And so uh, we did these audits and we were able to take that back to the grower and say, this is what you've got out here. Um, this is what we found, right? We flush in line, just like we did over here. We looked at pressure. We, we helped, you know, try to find hot spots in there. And we did this real evaluation so we could bring these raw numbers to them and say, this is what we found. This is how that system's performing. So um, that was a really good experience. And that's what I encourage you to do is, you know, start, with the best DU that fits for your application, maintain your system, and then test it and verify that what you what you got out in the field is what you paid for. Um, f finally, I would say, you know, um, okay, that all sounds good too, right? We kind of took the net. Why, why do why do I care, right? And th this really is our our springboard, I think, for our further topics or some offline conversations is why you know what I will, great let's let's water uniformly let's go get them what, why what are we doing here and it really comes down to your profitability right it is a building block it does not make your schedule perfect it does not uh, say that you're going to um, have perfect yields but without a good distribution uniformity component it's going to be very hard to do that you care because one, I think the easiest way to look at this is, is calculate your input cost, right? If you're having to overwater here uh, to water perfectly here, but then you underwater over here, what's going to happen on the top and the bottom, right? We understand that we're going to be pumping too much water over here and not enough water over here. Um, so what do we do as growers? Most of the time we pump more so that nothing is below. Uh, then all this is a little too, we, that pumping cost is a direct, um, uh, is directly correlated to their distribution uniformity. And so you start thinking about, can I afford a, a starting out with a 90% uniform emitter versus a 95? Well, let's not just look at it. Let's look at it, you know, not just apples to apples. Let's look at some of these other components that could be in there, like these pumping costs. That's a direct correlation. If you've got a four acre field, you know, that, that you know, may, maybe not, maybe the economics are there. If you're talking about, you know, commercial producers or like a landscape application where, you know, you've got other, other things like, uh, you know, high water cost, like extremely high water costs, right? These, these are easy decisions to make, um, but it's much easier to do them on the front end than, that, so, so, uh, than after. So, you know, the, the distribution uniformity 
uh, can directly affect your input costs. And also things like fertilizers and pesticides that you may be putting through your, um, through your irrigation system. Um, again, you're going to want, you know, if you're putting out nitrogen or whatever that is through your irrigation system, you're going to want to make sure your strawberries or your, you know, whatever, whatever your, your, your rose bushes, whatever you're doing, gets the minimum, right? So if everything gets the minimum and your uniformity is off, there's some things that are going to be getting way more than they need, right? That's a direct, um, direct calculation of how you can save input costs with improving your distribution uniformly. Um, and, and then, so, so kind of that's a, you know, bottom line savings. And then on your, on your top line, yield. Yield increases from from um, from the agriculture settings, um, you know, underwatering and overwatering all are, are are easy ways to 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 deteriorate yields. And you know, we we go back to that slide that we had previously that showed you know 100% is flat, but 90% not only went below, it went above. Right? We're not just talking about underwatering some areas; we're overwatering some and underwatering. And there's only a percentage that we're right in the sweet spot. So you're kind of getting it on, on both ends there where you're, where you're losing some yield. So the distribution uniformity, while kind of a in the weeds technical term um, that we may or may not have heard a whole lot, it, it really is the foundational building block from reducing input costs, increasing top line, and ultimately profitability. And that, that's kind of where I'd like to may, maybe leave it open and there's if some questions or are, are, are things that we want to talk about offline. But, but finally, I, I definitely want to, you know, definitely plug the drip micro irrigation design and management book. Um, Dr. Dr. Burton, and Dr. Stiles, again, pillars of our industry. Um, there's the link there that you can buy that book. Uh, they have a fifth edition that has like some new and more easily, uh, it's got a little bit more um, uh, instructions in the testing protocol it makes it a little bit easier to just take that testing protocol and go to the field with it. You're not kind of back and forth with the book and the testing protocol. Uh, they've done a lot of work with that and they continue to improve it. There's a fifth edition out. I only have the fourth, so I need to get me a fifth. Um, I, I think if you're in this industry, whether designer, sales, manufacturing, distribution, consultant, you, you need this book, right? Trust me on it. It, it, it. If you have one, have this one, right? And, and, and it goes really right along with our, with, our, with our resources that are put out by the Irrigation Association. But go to that website. They have a lot of other content there as well. And I also like to thank Dr. Franklin Gowdy. He also works out at, at the ITRC. Um, he's a personal friend. And when I when I got you know assigned uh, or voluntold that we're going to talk about uh, distribution uniformity, he was my first call to say, look, you got you know you got to make sure I'm I'm in the I'm in the right lane here. And uh, he's always a, an invaluable resource to me and really helped me along my way, especially from the technical side. So appreciate all the guys and the effort they've done for not just me but for our industry. And uh, with that, Richard, I, I, I'm done unless we we have some questions. Yeah, no, this is great information today, Michael, as usual. Uh, very, very interesting. We do have a few questions here now. And um, uh, first one is um, where, the coefficient of variance. Um, where, where can I find that about the products I'm, I'm purchasing? Um, a, a lot of people publish it. Not, not everybody. Um, and there's some, some reasons for that. There, it, 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 there's some variation in it, right? If you make a, a, a jillion of these emitters, like most of us do in the manufacturing world, um, you know, how, how much do you, um, you know, where do you want to set your bar at? Um, we, we publish some of ours, um, some of our, our newest literature uh, that we're working on. Um, we're, we're, we're talking about those discussions now, but a lot of manufacturers do publish that. Um, a lot of times they'll do it in a range, right? So, but that's okay. I think that's fine. You know, uh, again, you're talking about where, where do you want to put your effort? You, you don't want a coefficient of variance. If I slide back to this slide, you don't want 0.1, right? That's not where you want to be at. But, you know, the difference between 0.02 and 0.03 is probably pretty marginal. If you've got somebody that's saying 0.05 to 0.10, you can pretty much say, all right, those are not that they're bad products, they, they very well could be good products, but they're kind of a step down from what we feel like uh, is possible and industry leading. Doesn't mean it's wrong, but I think that's where you'll see, you'll see a lot of ranges published and, and, I, and, and call, your, you know, call your representative, call your dealer and, and they can access the technical, it, just because we don't publish it doesn't mean we don't have it. And we all have product managers that can guide you through that. And, and, and sometimes we even have a little bit of variance within the flow rates of a particular product too. So that's also a reason it's kind of hard to publish because it may vary a little bit on some of those flow ranges. So call your dealer, they'll get reach out to the product manager, the manufacturer, and we'll get you a, 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 get you a specification for that. 
Yeah. Okay, great. And then uh, another question um, is the uh, catch can test. Is that really the only way? Is there an easier way I can do a distribution uniformity? <laughs> <laughs> I wish, I wish, right? So, so I'd say there's one thing that, that's kind of where this, um, uh, I guess I'll go back to this. See, this is kind of what they describe as the old way before we really had, you know, I'd say um, a lot of analytics to, uh, to go out there and, and do these things this is where you kind of started, right? You can take this coefficient of variance, put it in, in some, in some flow ranges. You can get a distribution uniformity understanding this is going to be less than the field, right? I, I mean, excuse me, the field is going to be less than this. Unfortunately, these pictures right here is, is how yet these are not hard test to do maintenance and testing in general are not hard concepts to understand um, but they are time consuming um, and to do them properly is time consuming um, uh, tedious is one thing i'd say I'll, I'll say this example right here where this this guy here in the in the bottom right this is an end user and he he was just a great guy that wanted to know what in the world was going on out here so he could be a better irrigate uh, irrigator I appreciate that to the nth degree. He spent three hours with me looking at, at catch cups and taking pressure readings, right? He wanted to understand what he was looking at. But the reality of it is um, how this operation works is you take a pressure gauge like he's showing there and you go plug it in in a series of places throughout the field, a lot of places, a lot of places. So you basically build a pressure map of that field of actual pressures, right? Not what we design, what you actually get. And from that pressure map, then you identify areas to flow test and, and put a statistical analysis to it. And so you look for a place that is high. You know, we talked about pressure being a very big direct component of how your flow rate varies. So we look for a high pressure, clean spot, the best spot in your field, we measure there. Then we go to kind of like an average spot where kind of average pressures, middle of the road, middle of your zone kind of place, and we take readings there. And then we go to the worst place. We go to the furthest place in the row, lowest pressure, highest probability of clogging. And we take twice the readings there that we do at the other locations. So we're not running from those low flows that make that we typically see from low pressure and clogging. And then we look at the low quarter of those and compare them to the average. And that's how we get that distribution uniformity. Um, and you go, okay, that sounds a little complicated, but not too bad. And that, that's really what it is. Once you get going, but what it does mean is that you take, you know, hundreds of pressure readings and at least 60 catch can cups. And every one you got to sit there in time for a reasonable period of time. And you're lucky you can find two people to help you because everybody's going to scatter as soon as you ask them to come out in the middle of this field and do this stuff. And you even have some characteristics. Like we, we often will mark the cups or use different color cups. Because if I'm testing and this guy here, who also happens to be Mike, by the way, if I'm testing and he's testing and then we've got another guy testing and we go one, two, three, put our cups under there, we'll get different readings just because of the nature that we do. And we get better over time, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, we get more uniform. We get, uh, and do I go one, two, three, then put my cup? Or is it one, two, three cup? Or, or what is it, right? You know, and, and so you'll see those kind of variations. That's why we say these field tests are super important. We know if we're, if we're performing well, good, and these situations field tests, then our actual application is going to be higher because there's a lot of variability in these fields. But, but, but to answer your question, there's not a faster way to do it. Um, you just have to be diligent and mark you off a morning to do it because it took us about three hours to do this test. And we took our time, uh, made sure we did it the best that we could. Um, but it really was probably only – you know, may, maybe a 30 acre field. So it was a pretty small property that took us that long. We spent, you know, two or three days at that property at, uh, in, in um, Pacific Northwest. And we had a group of about 10 of us. So we were, it, it takes some time. It takes some time. Yeah. So speaking of this testing and, um, you know, learning on the job while you're doing it, I think you have a really nice offer for all of our uh, viewers today. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, you know, we wanted to leave you with a takeaway here and encourage you. This is good for us as a manufacturer uh, to understand how our products are performing out in the field. We don't get enough of this field feedback. Uh, we, we love to get out in the field. That's, that's our, our main thing that we, we love, to love to spend time out in the field. It's good for our, our designers and distributors so they can understand how the products are performing and, and, you know, again, understanding what products to recommend. And then ultimately, 
it's good for you to understand how your field is, is performing. So w what we'd like to do is, is offer the opportunity for the first five people that reach out to us after this, after this webinar uh, that we'll help facilitate a, a distribution uniformity test for your field. Uh, as soon as we're allowed to get back out on the road and travel, we obviously we want to be respectful of, of the current environment that, that we're, we're dealing with with COVID-19. But uh, we want to offer that to the first five people that, that reach out to us with additional questions or comments or, you know, resource questions and those type of things. And we'll facilitate that with our sales team or our marketing team that we have across the U.S. or dealer network. Yeah, so if you'll flip to your last slide again so we can uh, see your email address and uh, we'll right. say uh, the first five people to get to Michael Pippen at uh, Jane's USA, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Know, that's we won't have any way. fights about who got here first, right? It, it's that's to right. you and uh, the first five, uh, and we'll do this. Man, um, yeah. I wish I could apply, right? Uh, <laughs> I'd love to have that yeah. test. Now, how often does somebody have to, should be, how often should you be testing your DU? Matt, I would say, I, I, I know this is really pie in the sky, but man, on a new installation, it really should be done within a probably, I think, the first year. But r really, ideally, as soon as you start this thing up and kind of work out the bugs, make sure we're not getting false positives from like trash and the installation lines. And we had a little bit in this field because it was so new. You know, you kind of had to say, okay, well, there's PVC shavings in here. They're going to go away, right? Let's discount that. You, let your conscience be your guide on some of those things, right? We're just trying to get a feel for how that system is performing. But new system performance, Without the benchmark, we don't know where we're going, right? And that's, that's true with almost anything. So new system evaluations. And then I probably would, would encourage people to do that. Again, you know, an ideal pie in the sky. Let's look at it after a full season. If the deterioration is very minimal, then let's skip a few years or a few seasons. Depends on the run time, right? If you're running this thing all year long, then maybe, maybe annually is not a bad idea. There's a lot of stuff that we do on the landscape side that is extremely we wish we could do it every month right you know that we learn something every time we do it some of the stuff with et water you know we do annually these field audits and they're extremely valuable for the end users just kind of be, it comes economy of scale there for it so but we do those every year and half for a while and those are extremely important so i'd say ideally um do it every after every season and see where you're at it gives you time to react and that's the big thing you know wait 10 years and, and it might be too late to recover some of that that you've already that you've already lost yeah. So, Michael, uh, thank you uh, for all this information today. Great job, as usual. And uh, yeah, I found it just fascinating. I always learn a bunch of stuff from you. So I appreciate that. I appreciate everybody uh, watching uh, this afternoon. And uh, uh, please keep an eye out and rem uh, for our uh, future Lunch and Learns. And please remember, we've got all these stored on our website. And so you can search the website and uh, look for um, the virtual lunch and learns or the webinar series, and you can find them all there. Again, thanks to everybody. Thank you, Michael. And uh, we'll see you guys all next week. Thanks very much. Thank you, Richard.